Welcome back. Uh, I'm here to do a request video on drawing a Lewis dot structure and um, the molecular geometry of one as well. So here we go. The request was for BF3. First thing that we're going to do is use the EN chart because that was one of the things that the uh, individual wanted me to show them was the EN chart with this drawing. Okay. All right. E A N. It's in chemistry. All right. Well, the first thing we do is write E A N. E stands for elements. A stands for valence electrons, which is available electrons, and N stands for needed electrons. Well, here we go. Let's make a list. We've got boron. We've got three fluorines. Okay. Now, once we have that, we need to calculate these valence electrons. Now, you're going to need two sheets of papers to do these, uh, two sheets of papers that um, sh that will give you the valence electron count. So, one of those is a periodic table. Let's go ahead and look at our periodic table. Well, boron is in column 13, so it's going to need three valence electrons. Now, fluorine, let's look at fluorine. Fluorine is in column 17, so it's going to need seven. Now, on the need amount, uh, let's look at fluorine. Fluorine is going to need eight because there's column 18, which is the noble gases, to achieve an electron configuration that represents as close as it's ever going to be to being a noble gas, which is by electron configuration, it's going to need an octet. Okay, so it's going to need eight. So these guys get eight. Now, as far as uh, boron, I've always told my students, the easiest way to do the EN chart for those are the first five elements, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, and boron. Just go ahead and say that they will always need two, okay? So we're going to say that this needs two. All right, after you've done that, all that we need to do now is uh, add them up. So A equals seven plus seven plus seven plus three is 24. N equals 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 2 is 26. Now we need to subtract them. S stands for subtract, you think, right? Well, it actually stands for shared electrons. 26 minus 24 is 2. Now to get the number of bond lines, notice I said bond lines, not bonds, but bond lines. That's drawing lines. You take half of your S, and that's going to be 1. Now to get the number of non-bonding electrons, which are electrons that are not involved in bonding, which makes the bond lines. <laughs> to get the non-bonding electrons, it's 24 minus uh, 2. So that's A minus S. 24 minus 2 is 22. Now, once you're done with the math, don't look back at it until the very, very end. Okay? So let's go ahead and start making our drawings. So I'll kind of hide this from your uh, point of view for now. Well, we got one central atom. Okay? So, and that one central atom is going to be boron. But we got three fluorines. So we're going to work fluorine around our boron. Now, after we've done that, it looks like we need to go ahead and attach these elves to boron. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three. Okay, that looks kind of pathetic, doesn't it? So let's fix that. All right, so we got, that's not much better, but that's three elves bonded to the boron. Now, once you've got everything attached to the central atom like this, now it is time to look back at the math. Now, our math says that we have only one bond line. Well, if we only used one bond line, we would only get one elf attached. Let's say like these two bond lines weren't even here, they wouldn't even be, these elves would not even be attached. So there's something that needs to be adjusted in the math. So we can do that. Now when you do your adjusting in your math, you can always adjust up to the amount of bond lines that you need to get everything attached. You cannot make any more bonds than needed though. So we can't make like four bonds if we wanted to. We can only make how many bonds that are missing here. Okay, and we're missing two bonds because we calculated one bond line. So, for example, if we just needed two bond lines, what we would do is we would borrow two electrons from the NBE count to make this one extra bond line. So our 22 count would drop down to 20. So if we needed a three bond line count like we did get in the drawing, then my NBE count would then become what? Well, look at it. We went from 22 to 20, so we subtracted two. So what do you think this next number is going to be if we subtract 2? Well, you guessed it. It's 18. So now we've got to use the correct math with our Lewis dot structure. There's our three bonds. Check. Now we need to get the 18 dots. Well, the L's need eight uh, 
they don't electrons. Right now, all they, else, all they have is two. And the reason they have two is there's two electrons to make these bond lines. So two, four, six, and eight. And we're going to do that all the way around on these Fs. So two, four, six, and eight. Two, four, six, and eight. Now let's count how many non-bonding electrons we've used. Now if we have used them all, we're good. If we have any extra left, we can put them on the central atom in this location here. So let's go. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Check. We've used them all. So now we know our drawing is done. Now let's try to figure out our molecular geometries, our orbital geometries, our hybridizations, and polarity, and all that in the axis notation. We have three bonding directions here. The reason why I know we have three is there's something on my right, there's something on my left, and there's something at the top. Okay, so that's three directions. Right, left, and up. Okay, so that's three bonding directions. Now, how many lone pairs do I have on the central atom? Well, none. I don't see any dots on my central atom drawn like I do on these other Fs. Since there's no dots drawn on my B anywhere, then I have zero lone pairs. So the molecular geometry number I'm going to look for is a 3-0. That's when we need the handout 6A from my website or the one that your teacher has given you. Okay, A 3-0 is right here. There is three bonding directions and no lone pairs. Okay, So we're going to list everything that we can here. We have an orbital geometry that we got to account for. Okay, We have a hybridization that we have to account for and I, I'm getting that from orbital geometry up here and it shows this word, hybridization shows this word and this and its location, that's where I'm getting them from. My bond angle should all be 120 degrees uh, fall 3 0. Notice that this area is gray here so the polarity we need to also get it. The polarity on this one since it's grayed is nonpolar uh, now once again the hybridization was an sp2 if you did not get that and the orbital geometry was a trigonal plane right there I'm just now recording these myself as well now if you want to see what I've written so far uh, let me go back to the webcam okay I've labeled my orbital geometry trigonal planar hybridization sp2 polarity nonpolar okay back to the sheet okay my molecular geometry I'll just abbreviate that by writing MG on my board uh, MG is trigonal planar as well and my axe notation is which is the same thing as Vesper class is AX3 and that usually answers any and all questions now you can write the bond angle if you want to um, I, I'm I don't usually ask that question, but you know, at least in this series of the drawing and everything, but you can write the bond angle if you want to, which they said that was 120 degrees. Go back and make sure, yes, 120 degrees. So anyway, other than that, we're done with this uh, drawing and labeling all of the uh, structure. So I hope this was helpful uh, and everything, but. If you're curious about the boron, which I never really did mention, it did violate its duet rule, and it did violate the octet rule, because if you look, it used six. There are atoms out there that do violate the octet rule and the duet rule, so just be leery and check that math. All right, guys, hope this was helpful.